What's up everyone, this is Spooky. Guess what, Tekken 8 has landed and I've got your back with a quick guide on the game's mechanics, both the shiny new ones and the classic ones you all know and love. Whether you're a fighting game rookie, fresh to Tekken, or a seasoned vet just looking for the latest information, this guide is tailor made for you. So buckle up because we're about to take a deep dive into the world of Tekken 8. A common question I receive is, what character should I choose? In Tekken 8, we have lots of newcomers, including Reyna, Azucena, and Victor. There's nothing wrong with looking around on the character select and just choosing who looks cool to you or selecting someone that you've loved from past Tekken games. I made this short list of ease of use for each character. Please don't take this as a gospel because this is just my day minus one opinion on how quickly you can learn them. Feel free to pause on this section and don't be afraid to choose a character even if I listed them as advanced. That just means that you'll have to invest a little bit more time to learn their many tricks and strategy. Before I get into basic movement and actions in Tekken, here is a graphic that helps simplify inputs. Left punch is 1, right punch is 2, left kick is 3, and right kick is 4. For forward movement, hold forward to walk, double tap forward to dash, and triple tap forward to run. For backwards movement, you can hold back to walk, double tap back to back dash. For side movement, you can tap up to move into the background. Tap down to move into the foreground. You can also walk to the sides as well. Double tap up to walk into the background and tap down down to side walk into the foreground. Using this lateral movement well can allow you to dodge some attacks of the opponent. With expert usage, you can even punish their whiffs with humongous damage. Although only situationally useful, you can jump by holding up, up forward, or up back. You can short hop by releasing the input quickly after a jump. Back dash cancelling or Korean back dash is still allowed. You can use many tactics for inputting this, the most popular being back back into down back weight back, or back back into repeated quarter circle back weight back inputs. The quarter circle back method will not work well for characters with a sway back input. Basic attacks are executed with the attack buttons. One for left punch, two for right punch, three for left kick, and four for right kick. You can also use directions. Down forward one is a basic mid attack. Down plus four is a low. This down back four also happens to be a low. You also have strings of attacks like this down forward 3-3-2 series. Most of these attacks require you to press the inputs in advance, but there are some special ones that you can hit confirm. With Reyna's 1-1-2 and her 1-2 from Sentai stance, you can check to see if the attacks have landed before finishing them. To stop your opponent's sidestep movement, you can use your tracking moves. These are a very effective ways to stop their lateral movement, and some of them even guarantee combos on hit or counter hit. There are also attacks that you can do when transitioning from crouching to standing, such as this down 2 attack from Reyna. You also have moves you can do while crouching completely, as well as this while standing 1 attack as an example from Reyna, which you can do when transitioning from crouching back to standing. Also some characters have special sidestep moves, such as this great sidestep 4 low from Reyna that looks extremely useful. Some moves require you to input multiple buttons, such as these special forward 1 plus 2 moves from Victor, as well as his wild standing 1 plus 2. Now there is a tip to input these a little bit easier if you're having trouble hitting both the inputs at the exact same frame, it's known as button buffering, and the way you do it is you hold one of the attacks, so for example here I'm holding down 2, and then when pressing 1, I can get the wild standing 1 plus 2 or the forward 1 plus 2 whenever I want without having to press both buttons on the exact same frame. Some characters also have access to running attacks, like this Victor running 2, which is plus 5 on block. Not only can you just run up to the opponent and utilize these, but you can use a technique called instant running by triple tapping forward very quickly when close to the opponent. In Tekken 8, this has been made even easier to do than in Tekken 7, so utilize it for quick running moves and attack your opponent viciously. Tekken utilizes a high, mid, and low attack system. High attacks are very quick and effective on standing opponents, but can be crouched under. Mid attacks are effective on both crouching and standing, however they are unblockable complete to crouching opponents. And low attacks must be blocked low and are extremely effective on standing opponents. There are also special mids, 
and special mids can be blocked either way. However, you can still treat them as a mid for the sake of counters, power crushes, and other moves. There are also special lows. Commonly, almost every character's crouching jab, as an example, is a special low attack. Now, special lows do count as lows. That means that you can use your low crush and you can also low parry them to counteract them. To input a low parry, just press down forward near the same timing as your opponent's attack. You also have power crush attacks, which are armored moves that let you blow through the opponent's own attacks. They're extremely effective, especially when you are at a disadvantage. However, they can be countered in a few different ways, including your throws, which beat all power crushes, including heat bursts, that's very important, as well as your low attacks, which will break through the armor of most power crushes. When you get down to 20% life or less, you'll enter rage mode. In rage mode, you have access to a new attack, rage art, which has now been simplified to be down for one plus two for all characters. Very notably, rage art has a different type of power crush armor than other armored attacks. It defeats lows, mids, and throws, making it basically invulnerable to the opponent unless they block. I should note that whether you use your power crush or your rage art, if you run out of light from the attack you absorb, your character will take a round loss. So keep that in mind as you utilize these attacks. Tornado is the new combo extension mechanic featured in Tekken 8. This one is very similar to Screw, however there are a couple of major differences. One is that most Tornado attacks recover much quicker than Screw attacks did, helping you extend your combos. And most important is that you can use Tornado attacks at the wall when you get a wall spot. So if you haven't used your Tornado just yet, you can still extend and get some juicy wall damage to end your combo. Next let's talk about the new heat system. You get access to heat mode once per round. A basic way to get into heat is using your heat burst, which is an armored mid that has advantage on block. This consumes a portion of the heat bar, so you won't get the full timer, but it's a great way to get into heat while under pressure. While in heat mode, your attacks will do significant chip damage, and you can also recover some chip yourself by being aggressive. You can also press back twice after activating your heat burst to cancel the animation startup. This is a great way to transition into heat mode while giving your opponent less of an attack to whiff punish. Press 2 plus 3 again while in heat for your heat smash, a powerful attack which consumes all of your remaining heat time. Heat smash has lots of similarities to rage drive from Tekken 7, so use them aggressively both in combos and in neutral. Heat engagers are attacks that put you into heat mode when landing. When you activate heat this way, you get access to the full heat mode timer. Each heat attack has different properties and most notably different hit stuns. They are also extremely advantage on hit, allowing for mix up follow ups or sometimes even combos. As an example, this down 2 engager from Victor will not wall splat, but forward 4 1 and forward 1 plus 2 will both splat, allowing me to input follow ups. Now, very notably, Heat Burst follows the same rules as a standard Power Crush. That means that you can use your lows to defeat the opponent's Heat Burst, and you can also grab them out of the startup as well. So two very effective ways for dealing with someone that you know absolutely is about to utilize their Heat Burst on you. Alright, next up we're going to use King for a bit to talk to you about throws. You can input 1 plus 3 together, or 2 plus 4 for your generic throws. If you hold forward during these generic throws, you can increase their range, but you also increase their startup. All characters also have an up forward 1 plus 2 command throw. Now King has a multitude of command grabs, including this quarter circle forward 1 grab. He also has a forward half circle forward 2 grab, and he has this great running 3 plus 4 grab that he can utilize as well to mix you up. To break out of generic throws, you can use either your 1 or your 2, your left punch or your right punch to break out. It doesn't matter which one you choose, so most people like to choose 2 because you'll also cover 2 break only command throws. Now that up forward 1 plus 2 grab, as well as any grab featuring 1 plus 2, such as command grabs, usually will be broken with both punches together, 1 plus 2. 
Now, special command grabs, you can't use the generic input to break. So King's quarter circle forward one grab, as, as an example, has to be broken with one. His forward half circle forward two grab needs to be broken with two. And his running three plus four grab needs to be broken with one plus two, as he's using both hands in that one. A special scenario for King is his giant swing, which is a forward half circle forward one input. That one, although he's using both hands, because King's a weirdo, haha, you have to break that one with one very specific anti-king thing that you need to learn. Now, some characters like King, Azucena, and Dragonoff have crouching only throws. These throws cannot be broken at all, so the only way to avoid them is to stick out of the situation where they can use them. King also has access to these OTG throws. They both utilize both his hands. However, it's a 50-50 guess between a one break or a two break. Some throws will change your position or even side switch when broken. These are extremely useful for escaping the wall because even if the opponent breaks, you're put into a much more neutral or even advantageous situation to turn the tides. Some characters also have multi throws or chain throws. New to Tekken 8 is that you can just press one over and over to get the first round of your multi throw and two over and over to get the second round of your multi throw, simplifying the inputs. However, this does a little bit less damage than inputting everything either manually or going for the all four attacks method. So I do recommend learning these methods down the line if you want to do the most possible damage with your multi-throw attacks. Next up is some things you can do when you are knocked down by the opponent. You can press either punch attack to tech roll into the background. This gives you a short invincibility time, but the opponent can still set up more pressure on you while you're getting up. Use your kick attacks to tech roll into the foreground, which otherwise has the same properties. If you hold forward, you'll get this wake up kick attack, which is occasionally good for stopping the opponent's next move. It does have big recovery on whip, so try not to miss. Finally, you can hold back for a slide wake up, which is good for creating space. You also have this forward roll move, which is pretty dangerous, so you should use it rarely. But it's a good way for approaching the opponent after being knocked down. If you press 1 plus 2 during the forward roll, you'll get this special cross chops move, which is a mid that's plus on block. You can also use your standard wake up attacks during this as well. Once you are on the ground, you can press 4 for a mid kick attack and 3 for a low kick attack. In Tekken 8, these are safe on block, but your opponent can still interrupt the startup. You can also press 1 for a background roll move to try to escape the opponent's pressure. Press down in 1 for a foreground roll instead. If you hold down after these rolls, you will remain grounded, making it trickier for the opponent to know when it's okay to attack you. You can also use these moves into your wake up 4 mid attack or your wake up 3 low attack as well to extra keep the opponents guessing. If you press 3 plus 4, you can get this special little spring kick. But watch out because it's pretty bad on block and it gets much worse the closer the opponent is to you when they block it. Sometimes it can even be launch punished at point blank range. There are also character specific and special wake ups. Like King has this special back 3 plus 4 wake up that's very quick and knocks down. However, it's also very dangerous because if you do block it, you can get a guaranteed back combo or back throw attempt on him while he's recovering. If you want to learn some combos of your character, there are some training mode tools to help you out. First off, make sure to check out the sample combos list, which has both easy and more difficult combos for you to try out. In addition, check out the new combo trials mode, which teaches you some realistic combos for match play. Eventually, after working with these enough, you will learn how to freestyle combos based on the situation you need. Finally, it's all about putting everything together. The best way to apply what you have learned is just to play. If you're shy about playing against other players, try out the new arcade quest and super ghost battle moves. These are great places to apply your strategy, try out some of your moves and combos, and get used to playing against opponents which realistically mimic human players. Everyone, this is just part one of my little guide, but I hope to talk to you more very soon about some other advanced and important tactics, such as recognizing the opponent's moves and punishing. I hope that you guys will look forward to it. Please let me know what you thought of this guide so far, and I'll leave here for you a little bit of Victor gameplay to inspire you to improve with your own characters. Thank you very much for watching. As always, everybody, all love to you guys, and I hope that this video helped you out. Take care of yourselves, everyone.
soir, cuisine française.